All right. Oh, that was way too loud. That definitely clipped. All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another video. Uh, I've eaten fish. I've still got this yogurt here. Seriously. Uh, but I have eaten fish fingers, so I'll get around to it at some point. Just edited uh, part two, and I want to continue on. I don't know. Um, it's really cool editing this, because I see the city, and I'm like, oh, look at it grow, you know? What I was quite enjoying was looking just at the mini-map. And you see all the like dots moving off in the distance. It's like, I am the god of war. Worship me, and my soldiers will defend you. Oh, that that line is very nostalgic to me. Worship me. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I like seeing all the dots moving around. It's like it really is simulating the city, even when we're not looking at it. Uh, so yeah, greetings from Ares. Um, who is the purpose of this quest? Right. So go to start of event. The God of War has visited us. He's huge. You see, he's wandering around. I'm trying to click him, but it's quite difficult with all the buildings around. This city is like Ajax. Head and shoulders above the rest. Okay. So there we go. So Ares, the God of War. He's a friendly god, it says. So the gods are everywhere. Sometimes they're your friends, and other times they're a little less than friendly. Uh, here are the gods that you're bound to run into sooner or later in order of their strength. So you've got Zeus and Poseidon at the top. Um, which I'll talk more about later. Uh, and of course, and Hades, third of all. Alright, I'll give you guys the anecdote. So look, they did Zeus, Master of Olympus, and then they did the DLC expansion. Uh, I, I shouldn't even use the word DLC. I don't even know if that term was really coined at that point. They did an expansion, okay. Um, Poseidon. In the mythology, as far as I understand, okay, there are three brothers that are like the great rulers at the top of the pantheon. There's Zeus, like the, the, the ultimate god of Olympus. There's uh, Poseidon, his brother, who is like the, the world of water and Atlantis. And then Hades is the third brother, and it's the underworld. And there's this thing in about the... Oh, God, how do you even pronounce it? The C-T-H-O-N-I-A-N gods or whatever. The Chthonic gods. Chthonic. That word appears constantly in the roguelike uh, Hades. Which, like I say, I played last year and got me thinking all about this game. Um, but the three big brothers. <clears throat> the three big brothers, right? And... Um, I guess what I'm saying is I really wish that they had had the time or we had seen a third expansion, the Hades expansion to this game, which never came to pass. There are custom adventures, um, and I've sort of looked at casually over them online in the past, but I don't think anyone ever did like a Hades expansion. I think it'd be so cool to like do a fake fan art of like what the box art would look like and all that. Um, but yeah, there's only Zeus and Poseidon, but Hades is a god. He doesn't get his own expansion, but he is in it. Anyway, um, and then a bunch of other gods, we won't read them until they're relevant. But Ares down here. Uh, Ares, the god of war, can be a powerful friend. Click here to see how Ares can help you, should you decide to worship him. If he is your enemy, Ares may uh, invade your city with some of his fiercest warriors, or even unleash his dragon to do you harm. So it says click here. Oh my god, and it worked. Wow, there is some weird primitive hyperlink. Ares is fortress. When you build Ares' fortress, he will loan you two companies of his fiercest warriors to help defend the city or serve on your military campaigns abroad. Yet, with, none of which we've dealt with just yet, but you know, bear with me. You can control Ares' warriors just like you would any other soldiers. Click here to learn about sanctuaries. Well, we, we don't have to do that because I'll, I'll teach you guys that. Priests from Ares' fortress must uh, conduct regular sacrifices to function. The priests will go out in search of sheep, cattle, or goats. If they can't find either of these, they'll look for food to sacrifice. As long as the fortress is functioning, it will bring benefits to the city. And Ares will sometimes make an appearance accompanied by his dragon. If the dragon is hungry enough, he'll eat an enemy of yours, whether that be a man or a beast. You can also pray to Ares, and when Ares answers your prayer, he'll accompany your soldiers to fight abroad. Sometimes you won't even have to ask him, and he'll just do it. The god of war loves a good conquest. Wow, so there you go. So, <clears throat> let's jump into it here. What exactly do they want us to do? Oh, wow. We need a sanctuary to Ares. We need 50 people in residence, or better. So what does that mean? Well, residence is literally just, you know, a higher tier of house. Um, we need 30 sheaves of wheat for a new colony. And we need 25 jugs of olive oil for a new colony. 
So what's the colony thing? Well, that's going to be the next quest. So we already have the wheat. That was a piece of piss. So I'm going to set that aside. Okay, we essentially lost that 30 wheat now, but that's done. So what about the olive oil? Well, let's work on that because we've got a couple of reasons to get olive oil. If you guys remember, these red-roofed houses, the tenements, they want olive oil. And in fact, if you remember, um, when I click see supplies, there were these three boxes and they were all empty before. Well, now we've got the food box done. We've got the fleece box done. But this last one is olive oil. So we want this finished. And if you guys think, oh, well, after that, we've sort of seen everything about housing. Don't worry. There's a whole other type of housing called elite housing. And they need, like, loads of different stuff, like horses and things. So, And they're much bigger. Look at the plot for an elite house. So uh, we're really only at the start of our adventure here. But whatever. So, um, so olive oil, that's the third and final supply. Uh, and if I remember rightly, we started growing olives on these trees. And looking back now, it looks like I didn't really do enough. So let's grab some more here. So olive trees. And we'll do this. Now, I also want to get a check on how is our unemployment. It just says employment good. So I don't know what that means, really. I'm sure you can get a specific numeric somewhere. Maybe it's here. Employment. Your city has no employment problems. Does that mean it's perfectly balanced? I doubt it, right? Anyway, so they're going to keep growing these trees. Ah, and look, they've been doing it. So they're, they're picking the olives, and then they're taking the olives to this storehouse, which is full of olives. But we want olive oil. So um, if we head over to the industry uh, panel, if you remember, this was where we saw the masonry shop before. Well, there's also the olive press. So fleece, so food is like a T1 kind of material, you just gather it. Fleece, likewise, you just gather it. But olives, they're a little bit more complex. You need to gather them and then process them into a higher form. So that's what we're going to do here. I don't know what to do really with this corner here, so let's just do... And I guess we're in this thing where we're doing sixes. So six olive presses. Uh, a helping hand from Caledon again. These guys are amazing, aren't they? It keeps making me think of Guild Wars as well, with the Caledon Forest. Anyone else watching this been thinking that? Uh, hello, Potato This I noticed you could use some money. Oh yeah, we're in debt. Because I think so highly of you, I, Tidius, have decided to give you 4,000 drachmas. I'm pleased to help. Oh my god, dude. Easy mode is so easy. <laughs> okay, that's a lot of money. Didn't we start on only like 7k? Okay, but that makes me realise we probably should be taxing more people. So when I right click this, this generated 36 drachma so far in tax. Not very much. Here's how we change the taxes. Tax rate normal. So I'm going to up the tax rate here. So these people are charged a bit more. Now in the lower city, I don't even remember putting a tax office. In fact, while I was editing, I think I realized that I hadn't. So let's put a tax office there. And I mean, if we have all the infrastructure set up, let's put two houses there. And let's do... Oh, oh that's high tax rate still. Okay, so it's not building by building or it, or neighbourhood by neighbourhood. It's just the whole city. Okay. That's an interesting concept, isn't it? That you tax people purely based on where they live. Um, oh, and it, that's, I've, there's various places I've seen that in real life, actually. So maybe it's not that interesting. So I don't know why they're really low. It needs food. So we're not about to run out of food, are we? No, they've got over a thousand. I think he's just out of reach of the cart. I think the cart comes down and then runs out of food. So here you see we waste movement. We waste time when he goes up there before he comes down this way. So is there a better way we can deal with that? Man, my mouse mat is like warped from where I cleaned it and it's really throwing the mouse off. Which is a problem because we're only playing at 720p right now, so the mouse sensitivity is like super high. Anyway, before I get distracted and start talking about resolution... Um, okay, so check it out. The olive presses. This is one of my favourite animations. If not my favourite animation! Look, there's a little kid trying to help and he's just like stuck on the end. As like the two people lift it up and push it down. So good. Oh, I love it. It's a shame with these post-processing buildings though because... Um... There's never any walkers, I don't think. So you can't ever speak to an olive presser. You can just get this. Uh, the olive press needs a couple more workers. It's still making olive oil, but not quite as quickly as it could. It's got 11 people. They could use one more person. 
But, you know, it's good to have a city with a little bit of employment overhead, right? That's what everyone needs for opportunities. So you'll see now the olives are becoming these fancier looking jugs here. And this is olive oil, okay? And so what I'm going to say is empty olive oil. And over here, empty olive oil. And what that will do, and over here as well, empty olive oil. Is hopefully it will mean that our our storage bays near the the neighborhoods get the olive oil so that the workers at the bazaars can actually go and distribute it so let's do that now as well let's go uh, I said bazaar agora um, guys, why can I never find the agora here we go All right let's remember that that's on the pot so what we do is we say oil vendor and you'll notice a bunch of new stuff started filtering in here now, now that the missions have gone up. There's a Grand Agora, there's Wine Vendor, Arms Vendor. We shall deal, don't you guys worry. So here you go, look, these guys are moving their stuff around. Over here, I'll give you guys an Oil Vendor as well. And then in the lower city, we will also have an Oil Vendor. <clears throat> So you can start to think, okay, what are some of the ways in which we want to handle setting a city up? We want a housing district with a sort of a, an isolated storage thing, and all those storage bays are just going to be like housing commodities, and then there can be like industrial bays for like, you know, this sort of stuff, like sculptures and whatever. So we've got a real overflow of food here. And I could build more granaries for it, but the issue we have is we need more workers. So then we need more houses, so then we need more other stuff, unless we can just squeeze the houses in here, here or there, like that. It's maybe okay, that can be a house there as well. So we don't, what we don't want is a bunch of people just standing around on the roads doing nothing because they have not, nowhere to deposit their stuff. I think in terms of mechanics, it's not actually that big of a deal, especially if you're playing on easy mode, like, who cares? But, um... I don't like the thought of someone sitting, essentially, in a perpetual traffic jam. So there we go, Tidius has given us more sculptures. So that's very good of him. Okay, oh no, we, we, we're almost missing it. Okay, so, there were some olives made it. There's no supply, we've run out of supply. But these houses got some olives, so hold on. So we went tenement with a red roof. Then it went up to an apartment. Okay, these guys live in apartments. And then with really high appeal next to an apartment, you go up to a townhouse. Um, and the townhouse is max for common, for common housing. So look at that, you can literally see it, it builds as it goes along here. So these guys need a little bit more appeal. Uh, well, we can deal with that quite comfortably, can't we? Because as we looked at right at the end of the last part, we have uh, monuments now. So let's put the happiness monument right there. And everyone's gonna, it's gonna look really good there now. So our population's at 2,000, there you go. So we've got loads of people now. Oh, beautiful. However, this is contingent on them continuing to get olive oil. All they're, they're all going to de-evolve de devolve again as soon as the olive oil runs out. Which is not good. So let's do something a little bit cheeky here. So, um, the commodity trading around Greece is really simple in this game. But I think it's really good. It's, it's good enough. Uh, basically, when you click a, a person of some kind. So like these guys up here, Mount Pelion. It will say, what do they buy, what do they sell? And that's about it, really. So these guys will buy our wheat. So for example, we have loads of wheat. So why don't we try to sell it? So well, let's give a gift. So orders, I guess? Oh, we need to build a trading post. So they're congenial. Review my history. How do I build a trade? Oh yeah, trading posts. Yeah, I don't think we have them unlocked yet. Yeah, so if we built a trading post, we could sell them wheat, and we could be exporting that, and we could be buying their bronze. These guys buy onions and marble. We could be selling them. They sell fleece and sculptures. So what I'm looking for is someone who sells olive oil. See, these guys sell olive oil, but we don't have a trading post, so I'm just going to try and beg. Will you please give me olive oil? 
<laughs> so we're begging for olive oil from Argos. <laughs> and hopefully they'll give it to us. Okay. Um, I'm really worried that we're just spreading olive oil all over the city here. See, here's the thing. I'm going to build these granaries to take all this supply of wheat and whatnot. And they're going to devolve and it's going to be real bad. This is why regularly saving is a very good idea. Let's see how our mine is doing over here as well. Happiness monument is available again. So yeah, the, the, the monuments are pretty overpowered in that you'll just get a lot of them. So we're totally rammed with marble because we've got way too many masonry shops. What do you need? Fleece. I am the god of war. So Ares, Ares is visiting again. So let's see here. So not only do we need to distribute olive oil around the city, but we also want some in stock for this new colony. So we'll have to keep a, an eye out. See, okay, so it says 50 people in residence or better. So I guess residence is not... Um, sorry, we, re we rotated the screen there a bit, weirdly. Residence is none of these. Residence is the elite housing. So, wow, we've got all of the elite housing to set up as well. I guess I should get a uh, move on with that. Right, here's what I'm going to do. How far does he go? Does he keep going? Does he keep going? I'm watching this. Okay, he goes that far. So, he won't go any further than that. But, uh, since he does at least go that far, let's get a grower's lodge. You see how I was trying to point this out in the previous part. As I build in places like this, it blocks where they can walk, right? Like when there's just one shed, they can go anywhere they want. But eventually what I'm essentially doing is creating all these walls they have to move around. And it kind of does lower their efficiency of movement. Okay, Argos grants my olive oil. Hello, Potatifus. I've heard your request and have decided to comply with your wishes. Here are the 12 jugs. Thank you. That's really good of you. You're a good guy. Thanks very much. I'm going to give you some wheat. Um, give a gift. Look, you can you can have so much wheat. I'll give I'll I'll, I'll feed all of Greece if needs be. I right, can that sheep please move. We could delete it as well. But whatever, okay, and then let's get just a couple more olive presses. The olives must flow. Oh, no, 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 we do have trading. Look, we do have trading. Okay, so hold on. It was Argos, right? Argos sells olive oil. Buys sculpture and wine. So we need to sell first. So who, who buys wheat? Mount Pelion buys wheat. So I'm going to make a trading post to Mount Pelion. Now... I believe this is the exit to the city. So there's an entrance down below. The exit's up here. He summons a famine. Um, a famine has struck my city and my people are miserable. I can't produce the food to feed myself and I fear what will happen if my followers go much longer without eating. Send eight food before this tragedy worsens. There you go, you weren't a dick, so you can have it. And you can have it promptly. So, um... It's a good idea, I think, to put the trading post near the exit to your city. Because by putting it to the exit, they get out quickly. But see, this guy, his animation's going very fast. He's got nothing to do here right now. But so when we right-click this, we can sell, okay? So for example, I'm going to sell my wheat. Because I have a lot of wheat. Um, space for 60 loads. You could shift some labor. Delivery men are waiting instructions. All right, I think that's fine. Let's just sell wheat. Okay. And we'll see how that goes. He's going to go and get some of our extra wheat from these granaries. And then he's going to start selling. We want to be a little bit careful that we don't <laughs> create our own famine. Because we've spent too much. And I don't even really want the money here necessarily. Because we've got so much. But okay, so that's fine. So then trade... And Argos, Mount Pelion regards me more highly. Thank you very much. Oh, the home games begin. Ah, so we are hosting the Olympics. Let's have a quick look down here. There you go. This stadium is the site of many a great battle com competi competitor against competitor. Your city is proud to be hosting the games this year. We don't even have it fully 
We don't even have all the employees we need. So that's a bit rough. But here, okay, I want to buy, I want to import olive oil. Now he wants to, they're selling it for quite a lot of money, so we'll see how our money goes with that. But there you go, so, um, oh my god, what's, what's all this? Oh, no, 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 these are all people coming to do the games. Look, these are all people from outside. Do you guys want to speak? Sampras. This guy is called Calisthetics, that's funny. All right, so off they go, hopefully. So there's our wheat getting loaded up for selling. So that will give us some olive oil as well, even though we're producing our own. So, you see, yeah, these devolved again. These devolved, because we didn't have enough olive oil. So we really, we just, we just need a lot of that right now. Um, let's do another olive press. Another olive press. It's tricky with these T2 ones because I need to get a sense of how much is it olives that we don't have and how much of it is we need more olive presses. So let's just make sure we've got a lot of trees. Enough trees to make everyone happy. Yeah, for example, I just put those trees... No, 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 you know, they're not. They're shepherds. So that's fine. And let's put a grows lodge there and a grows lodge there. And uh, yeah, we're, we're very inefficient here and um, spending a lot more money probably than we need to, but that's okay, you know. That's all right. <clears throat> I like how big that tree looks in amongst the other ones. Now, what else can we do in the meantime? Oh, well, there you go. We have 25 jugs we could set aside. Should we do that? I mean, yeah, let's just do it real quick. Okay, so that's those two objectives done. So we need a sanctuary to Ares. And then we need the, the good houses. So let's do the Sanctuary to Ares. Wow, they really throw everything at you. So if we go to the Mythology tab, we have um, a couple of new buildings here. There's the Artisan's Guild, and there is Sanctuaries. So Ares' Fortress will cost us 960 drachma. That's crazy. That's far more expensive than anything we've done before. And 13 marble, but thankfully we have a shit ton of marble anyway. The City Games End. Though they tried, tried the hardest, Potato Fest, our city's contestants lost our city's games. Oh. Still, our citizens appreciated seeing some of their favourite contestants from around Greece, so your popularity has increased. Plus, since our city proved to be a capable host, cities throughout Greece also think more highly of you. Okay, well there you go. Mount Pelion now loves us. We're among their favourite people and a fantastic leader. Everyone should aspire to be more like us. Look at how easy that was. Beautiful. Okay, so... Look at how huge this is. Like I say, the palace was that big. This is this big. And I'm telling you guys, this is the smallest one, I think, in the game. <laughs> this one's tiny compared to the later ones. So we're going to build a big sanctuary. I'm thinking a new branch of the city. So let's say over here. Oh, that's a bit weird. It's like upside down. Well, whatever. I guess it's upside down. So you see, it just looks like pavement. It's a little bit like when we first made an agora, right? Not much going on. When I right click it, it says without artisans, the project will never get off the ground. Build some artisans guilds. The sanctuary to Ares is 0% complete. The remainder of this pro uh, project will require 40 marble, that's excellent, we have that. 12 loads of wood, well we don't have any wood yet. And two sculptures, we've been given loads of sculptures, so that's very nice. So, but the artisans will make that. So, if we hit up the mythology tab, do Artisan Guild 1, 2, 3, and just 3, because we really need more workers, and they will come as, as this is a steady supply of olives, and in fact, look, the whole olive chain's amazing, look at the animation for this, the Agora olive dispensary, the guy slipping on the oil, and rolling back, and doing a backflip, look at that, that's so good, right, so there you go, oh, I love it, look at, when they're really tall, and you just see a hint of the people walking between, in the background there, I also love this like little cross here. I don't know this window, the like the wooden plus sign. It's something I've always really enjoyed about that. Okay, that's excellent. We got huge amount of capacity for people there now. How are you guys doing? You want more culture? You want olive oil? Okay. So what I'll do is I'm going to shift the roadblock down there. Because I don't know. I don't know how far they'll go. Maybe this is good enough. 
Now, if you want more culture, I can do you more culture. Because what I'll do is I'll get rid of this tax office. And I will... Um, I will give you... A theatre over here. Oh, no, the theatre's too big. Okay, so... The theater being massive is like a it's like a mechanic, okay? Like the theater is big, but the drama school is small. And for philosophy, it's the reverse. The college is big, but the podium is small. And that does have an implication on that. Like later, we're gonna have cramped areas, like between rivers or mountains and things. And the kind of housing blocks you can make are gonna change because you can't get this culture or that culture and so on. So. That's something to consider. Okay, so these guys still want culture, but I'm sure they'll get it in a minute. We just need to wait. I'm sure, I mean, what, what more culture could you want? Oh, hold on, though. Yeah, I mean, they've got a gym there. So olives are coming in. We, we've got the olive oil all throughout the city now. You can see these guys are importing it. Oh, we just missed it. One of the, the supply traders was up here on this road. They had, like, these little donkeys. Here you go, these guys, these burros. Back and forth, back and forth, I'm beginning to feel like Sisyphus. This guy is... Oh, there you go, a little reference to Sisyphus there. Back and forth, back and forth. Uh, you know, I didn't know anything about the myth of Sisyphus until literally like a few months ago when I found a song that was named after it. Um, Caravan of merchants from Argos, nothing to trade here, just passing through. Well, what do you mean nothing to trade? I'm, I'm buying olives. Now, is that infinite, by the way? Oh, it looks like it's slowly working down, so I might have to manually refresh that, and this is an infinite button. Okay, so there's this branch of the city is doing okay. These guys do not have oil still. Ah, okay, this is... Caladon's insane. Caladon is giving us everything here. Greetings! I want to give you wood, but I see your storage facilities can't accept the items right now. So I'll return in a month. Okay, that's great. So we need more storage. Of course we do. So, ugh, this is a mess. This is going everywhere. So here we go. So we'll, we'll have some wood here. So he's going to give us a gift of wood. So one thing that's quite nice is when you get a gift from someone, there is no, I guess this is a limit of the game really, but there is no actual travel. You know, nobody actually walks over and delivers to you. And so you can kind of cheese it in a way. Like when he gives me the word, he's going to give it to one of these storehouses because the other ones are full. And therefore, it's going to be right on site next to this sanctuary where it's needed. So check it out. The artisans, Philippos, he will take the wood there. And it's really cool how this all updates as it goes along. Like, as you see, they bring the marble in. You will see literally each little square here, they will hammer on this guy has hammered up every single little bit. And he's left these holes with the rough marble. That's going to be where the statues go. And the artisans will deal with all of that for us. How many employees does it take? It takes 25 per shop. I mean, I don't really know why I built three. Maybe I only needed one. I could delete the others and see what happens. Should we try? Like, does it just speed it up? Like, who cares, right? So there you go, so you can see the scaffolding here now. And again, I, I'm pretty sure this um, temple is upside down here. <clears throat> or sanctuary. Actually, what did they call it? They didn't call it a sanctuary or a temple. It's like the hall of... No, it wasn't the hall. I can't remember. In the flavor text at the start of this episode. Uh, anyway, it's me and games begin. <coughs> For honor, prestige, and so on. Well, good luck. Okay, what else we got? I think I was just... I mean, I, I want to show you guys the animations. <laughs> Here you go. So, look, they're bringing marble in. I think we've just missed it. We've missed the bit where they put the tiles on. Sorry, guys. We've missed that bit. But, by the way, you know, what you can do as well is you can try to make things really fancy around these areas. So, uh, oh, yeah, I show you, I talked very briefly about the avenue in the previous part. Avenues are really cool, okay? What they do is they connect to... Par Actually, I can show you with the elite housing. Um, which I guess we set up now. Should we have those people living on the other side of the river? The problem is getting all the goods and stuff over there. Oh my god, they're bringing olives. Oh god, see, this is the thing. Oh god. 
<laughs> okay, all right, hold on. I think we'll be okay. Oh my god, he's trying to give me bronze now. All right, um... I don't know how unemployment is. That's not past the roadblock, is it? The maintenance guy can get all the way up here. Let's watch him. City needs more workers. I know, I know, I know, I know. We're going to get more... Yeah, let's accept that bronze. Okay, so basically the bronze, you can mine like marble, and we'll see that eventually. And then you can make your own statues and so on. Okay, he can get all the way up here. All the way up here. Look how far he can go. Oh my god. So he can go all the way up there. So we're blocked off anyway, but that means that's all legal space. So, okay. Um, let's do elite housing, and I'm just going to try this. I haven't done for th what you're about to watch. I haven't done for years and years and years. I'm sure that this is going to go wrong, but screw it. So elite housing. So one, the games conclude. We didn't do very well. This is also on farmland. I don't know if I want it on farmland. That's not farmland up there, though. Okay, wow. This, this city is just crazy. This is just crazy. Okay. So, first thing is to get a maintenance guy. And what we want to, what we want to do, he's going to go all the way up there, and I'm sure he'll make it, okay? But we don't want him near the houses, the actual building. We want it as far away from the houses as possible. And then I think also the infirmary, we also want really far, because these are ugly. And aesthetics are important now, okay? So we can do that. So then what I can do is I can put some elite housing here. I oh, see so it says it needs high appeal, even to place it needs high appeal. So we will go beautification, avenue, and I'm gonna just connect directly onto the path, an avenue like that, which will beautify the area somewhat. Oh God, he didn't actually go all the way up the road. That's a little bit worrying. We might have plague in the house on the end. Um, Caladon needs fleece. Dude, you can have all my fleece. I'll die for you, Caladon. There you go. Oh, that's still not enough appeal. Okay. So we could use a monument. See, I think that, I think the way that people do this is you like but you need a very good sense so it's by that park there you need to do like that right and now you can put the plot down no you still can't put the plot down damn okay hold on let's give them two double layered parks like that, and then all the way along here. These are really pretty and very cool for what it's worth. There you go. Okay, and then a gap. Oh my lord. All right, well, we can do it now. So then it's this park, like this. And then, oh no, but the problem is, I don't really know how to... Oh, whatever. <laughs> this is the first thing anyway, we're on easy mode. So I'm just going to put a monument in the area. <laughs> and that's going to buff the appeal. There you go. Alright. Monument solves all. So like that. Let's do one more. Well, no, no. I think we probably don't need one more. As long as we... Are you happy to live there? Come on, one more, one more. Nice. Alright. So there we have it. Beautiful, right? The thing is, these guys need a lot of stuff now. Okay, so... Let's clear this wildlife away. Oh man, I've really got to figure this mouse out. It's horrible. It's really horrible. It's like trying to use a mouse through fudge or something. Um... So, we'll go to Agora, but we'll do a Grand Agora. 
Ares' fortress is complete. Oh, let's go have a look. The god of war is laughing with glee today. Tickled by the fact that you have completed a sanctuary in his honor, he has sent a pair of company of soldiers to defend your city in times of trouble. He's also granted you his dragon who will smite down any enemies you happen to run across. So let's have a look over here. I'm sorry, we, we missed the construction of this thing. Yeah, look, they build this giant house here. And then... Um, and the, the big statue in the background and these little statues. This looks like it only took like three statues. The the bit basically the more dangerous and badass the gods, the crazier the requirements are to build their thing. So because I agreeably sent the fleece, you think more highly of me. Great. I think you liked me already a hell of a lot anyway. But there you go. Ares all marched to war with my soldiers. With a fortress, that's the word they've been using. With his fortress uh in the city. Two savage companies of warriors serve us loyally. Sometimes his dragon will engage enemies. Well, we, we, we haven't got many battles and things going on, so that's fine. This needed 50 people. We could shift some labor. We could pray to him. Ares has heard your prayer and is eager to go to war with your soldiers. He will go at the next available opportunity. Not that we're at war with anyone, so whatever. But now that we've... Just like with the Hercules Hall, he will now patrol the... the the city. He now just lives with us, just like Hercules does. Should be somewhere around his, his house. Somewhere. I'm not sure where. Can't really see him right now. Hold on. This is where we built it, isn't it? Oh, he's totally gone. Oh, I think after he killed the Hydra, his house left. That's a bit of a shame. Well, whatever. Ares isn't going to leave. Okay. So Ares is wandering around here. Uh, funny thing, there's a bug. If you play the game on modern versions, I mean, they sell this game on Steam now, and it's not fixed, and it's kind of pretty bad, to be honest. Um, but it's like the gods, for some reason, something about that visual effect on them makes them move really slow, like unbelievably slow. Uh, so actually, you're technically looking at a modded playthrough right now. I have a mod to fix a couple of little bugs like that. Uh, and I'm running the one from a guy uploaded on CurseForge. Like, if you look up this game on CurseForge... Uh, sorry, Nexus Mods. CurseForge, because I'm thinking about Minecraft. On Nexus Mods, there is one mod. And uh, it's a really well-documented, excellent little mod that basically, you know, it's like widescreen fix and stuff. But you kind of need it to be able to play the game, because otherwise the gods bug. Anyway, so there you go. So we have Ares. Now, back over here to these fancy, fancy houses. Now, you'll notice immediately that they're abandoned. This house needs access to more culture venues in order to survive. So, but it needs everything. So I, I can't remember how to do this. But that's, that's the magic. We're going to figure it out. Okay, so I assume they need food. And I assume that they need fleece. And I assume that they need oil. So let's just get the basics in. Oh, there's fire. Where? Uh oh. Um. Okay, fire is really bad. I don't want that to spread. Oh, I'm just gonna break it. Can I break it? Oh, I can't. Okay, hold on, hold on. I don't know why there's a fire there. Let's do that. Oh, the mouse. Okay, go. Do we have the workers to deal with that? Please don't burn everything down. There we go. Alright, so you saw a nice little, very, very subtle little animation there for a brief moment. That maintenance worker just put that out. Okay, so we have an extra maintenance shed up there now, I guess. Whatever. Okay. Back to this. Okay, people are trying to come here to live, but it's basically getting abandoned really quickly. So I, they, I don't know if they need all the culture in the, in the whole thing. I would hope not. Also, I don't know. So, like... Also, I don't even know. Does that count as a path? It's a beautified path. Yes, it does. Okay, good. So we can have stuff on the other side of the avenue. Excellent. So I think a bro dude will leave this and walk all the way to the stadium now. I, I think. Or at least he'll patrol up and down. Like, I don't know if you need multiple colleges. Maybe you only need podiums now that we've got a single central college. Like, there's two, for example. I think one of these is a walker, and I think the other one is on his way. So he's a walker because he stopped by the roadblock. But let's check this guy. I think this dude might walk through the roadblock and go all the way to the stadium. So we didn't do very well. Also, why do I hear fire again? No, okay, they're both just walkers. I don't know. 
Is that guy in a different coloured shirt though? One of these guys? <laughs> Does that mean he's going somewhere else? Is that a different coloured shirt? Looks like one's bright and then- Yeah, he is! I was right! I bet Atlas is pleased to hold the sky up for this city! It's superb! Excellent, yeah. Okay, so he's a competitor. Pedragoras. Good luck, dude. I bet Atlas is pleased to hold the sky up for this city. It's a perk. Okay, so in theory, does that mean I can put a podium here? Just a podium. And I think in about 10 minutes, a guy will come walking up to this podium. <laughs> Maybe. I really don't think we have the employment, though. I mean, it says three people are there out of four. So the other the other thing is, though, I think on the opposite side, we can put normal people houses. I think. So then also, um, they, they might want a theatre here as well. As long as this doesn't affect the appeal in the area. I kind of don't like having monuments like this not connected to pavement. It feels it, it feels like that's out in the wilderness to me, that monument. You know, who's looking at that? Who's appreciating that? Who's getting to that? But hey, okay, so, so these guys seem okay. So the residents of this house can't make improvements until they received armor. But hey, it's a residence already, and that's all we needed for the quest, right? So we need 50 people in residence. We only have four. You cannot be serious. I need 50 of the 40? No, that's not right. Oh, they're moving in now, I think. Does it say residence or better? Yeah, it says or better. Okay. That, that makes some sense. So, yeah, these are stronger houses. Now, I haven't even explained why these are in the game yet. Um, the people that live in these will be like your elite classes, your, your aristocrats your soldiers most specifically so basically these guys will make really powerful fighters for you um and like one of these these vendors actually in the end is is for horses right and if you do if you get the horses then they become cavalry and stuff and they're all just much 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 stronger i don't see why we couldn't also put some houses down here by the way so my whole thing with this let's play was to do crappy building, crappy layouts first and then good ones later. But I think this is a pretty amazing setup already. The avenue for free appeal, surrounded by parks. I think you're going to see me doing this a lot. I think this is the setup. Aside from, you know, I could have done something really janky by putting like a happiness monument there. Oh my god, we're in debt again. Hello, Potato Fuss. I noticed you could use some money because I think highly of you. I'll give you some drachmas. Thank you, man. Look at these unsightly huts. So the problem here is... Um, it says that they have food and fleece and oil. But where are they getting the food and fleece and oil from? Nobody's working at any of these markets. Okay, I might be wrong about this, but something just flashed to my head while I was watching this in editing. I'm pretty sure that like you spend an initial, like, an upfront lump sum of fleece and oil and stuff to place the residents down. You know, like how the Ares Sanctuary took marble immediately? I think it's something like that. Um, so they're like an upfront stockpile at the beginning that we do ultimately need to replenish, otherwise the place will get abandoned. I think. I haven't looked that up, and I'm going to keep blind about certain things with the game just because it will be more interesting. But I, I think that's what it was. Anyway, just struck me now. And nobody's working at these markets because um, we haven't got any storehouses anywhere near here that are good enough. So let's see. If I do a storehouse, right, and I right click it. And I say empty that of wine. We don't want any wine there. It can get olives, though. We don't ever want it sculptures there. We don't ever want armor there. But we do want it to have fleece. We do want it to have olives. We don't want marble. We don't want bronze. We don't want wood. Now, why is wheat on that? That's weird, because wheat goes in granaries, doesn't it? Look, they've got down the dragons there. That's cool. Wow, the art's pretty interesting. There's a lot of really interesting art, by the way. Um... 
Like, when you're installing the game, obviously it takes two seconds now because of SSDs and blah, blah, blah. But uh, there's really nice, pretty art, and that used to be, like, a long thing you'd sit through. Um, when I pick the adventures and the campaigns, if you go back to episode one, or hopefully if you remember when I do the next one, you see there's really good art there. I don't know. Maybe there's an album online somewhere and I can start editing in. But, yeah. Okay, and then here... Well, they don't need cheese. This doesn't matter, but we do want it to get some wheat, so go get some wheat. So they're off. So they've got quite a walk. Uh, also, they don't actually have... Um, what am I doing here? They don't have a maintenance office, so we should set that up. And I suppose it doesn't matter that there's no roadblock on the other side just yet. There we go. More people are coming to live in these residences. So 24 people living in them right now. We could swap these regular houses for more residences. We can't expand the road further long because we need to make sure he actually fixes everything. So he has fixed all of that. But I think that was the extent of his the distance that he was willing to go. But yeah, so in theory, these two will go and receive the goods now. They'll stay full, which means that these guys at the bazaar will always have something to do. Um, is there something else that I've missed here? Uh, we could tax them. Good idea to tax people. Seems that... Oh, well, whatever. Sorry, dude. I thought you could live here, but you can't. Sorry, it's just poor city planning. That's my mistake. And yeah, I want to keep taxing people high, especially here, if they're going to be wealthy people. There you go, for example, the olives are coming in. Oh, no, 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 not olives, just olive oil. Okay, tell them to empty it. Sorry, everybody. Sorry, that's my mistake. So what's the third thing that they want? Oh, yeah, armor and wine. But that'll be later. Yeah, empty that out of olives. We don't need... Oh, no, look, they're bringing billions... Look at this! Whoa. Oh my god, we got too much marble. We need to start selling marble. Okay, who 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 buys marble? <laughs> Anybody buying marble? Buys sculpture, buys wine, buys wooden armor. Caledon buys marble. Oh my god, do you know what? Caledon? Um, why do I keep... There we go, gift. Marble. You can have 16 marble, Caledon. I don't even have any need for it anymore. That's Hydra Marble. That's Thebes quality Hydra Marble. That's Argos. That's Pelion. So, um... Where was the, uh, the trading post here? No, that's a military workshop. With the wharf and the armory. I forgot about the wharf. I think that's for building a navy. Here we go in the pot. He's grateful for the marble. Yeah, no worries, man. The Pythian games begin. Okay, Caledon. I'm going to open formal trading. We've gifted loads before, but whatever. I will sell you marble. I will sell you lots and lots and lots of marble. And if you want to sell me... No, no, we got to we got to empty out our storage here a little bit. We're completely flush. So the only problem still is food. But here comes the wheat. And now that there's wheat, she'll come grab the wheat. She'll do that. Now, what do these guys want exactly? Armor. Okay, I mean, yeah, but we, can, we, can, we don't produce our own bronze. So I could do this again. Yeah, let's do it again. Let's do it again. Like so. So roadblock, maintenance office, and then, okay, so the boulevard is like a double avenue, all right? So we'll do a, a boulevard all the way up there, and then we'll do, um, we'll do an athlete monument at the end of the road. That looks really cool. I like that a lot. And that ensures that at least a couple of people... Wow, that dragon's quite scary, isn't it? See, I wonder if you could, like, offset like this as well, you know? Like, it's still technically on the road. 
I think the appeal's probably getting a bit low over here. It's not. Wow. Wow. Oh my god, look at how good that is. And then, in one fell swoop, we can go park. Top corner. Oh, that's good. Okay, but hold on. Hold on, though. We've lost loads of space now. <laughs> uh, oh, there's a festival. Oh, what? Potatoes, you three-headed dog. Give me ten amphorae of wine for my festival to Dionysus. Within eight months, I, a gave, have spoken. Well, I've got to beg for someone else then for that. I guess we can do that, but we'll do that straight away. I don't really know how long eight months is going to take. That guy needs wine. This guy produces wine. You're a rival, though. They're apathetic to me. That guy buys wine. Listen, I know you don't like me very much, but, um... Please, can I? No, I don't want to demand it. I don't want to demand. I'm not going to demand anything from him. I can't make my own wine, dude. I can't make my own wine. Oh, look, I can try and buy it from them. Okay, hold on. So. Okay. So we need we need another thing now. Thank you, Caladon. Yeah, that's all right, man. You can have fun with all of that. Look at that, forging alliances. Wait, 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 fire in the city? I don't know where that was, hold on. We need to build, well that's a pier to Libya. Well, where's that fire? My mouse is just deteriorating. Oh God, I never built these guys a maintenance ship. Or I did. I don't know, sorry Ares, <laughs> your place caught on fire. I don't know what we're gonna do about the wine. We'll deal with that as time goes forward. We might end up getting into a fight soon. <laughs> Not sure. Uh, but let's prepare for the worst. Okay, so... An orchard, wheat farm, what am I doing? Pot, over here. Grand Agora, right there. Now you need water. See, here's the problem. What about the infirmary and all of that? It's like... It's like we've screwed up here, because what we need to do is this, and then, yeah, whatever, six months to comply. I'm not giving it to you. And then we need to delete that. So that, that whole place is now disconnected from the rest of the city. I don't know whether that just works or what. We go down here, and so... Infirmary. Uh, I guess putting it here isn't going to be a big deal, is it? See these guys who are walking on nothing right now? That's because there was a path there, and now there's not. Um, administration. Let's put a tax office down. What else do they need? Water. The stuff from the Agora. What I should get used to as well is when I put an Agora down. I was thinking about this when I was editing. Put the other stuff down with it. Like, what's the point in mousing around into different categories like finish up first okay <laughs> so there like that and do that and then oh the mouse is getting worse and worse how is this mouse getting worse all right okay i'm editing that there all right we're back my mouse was just getting worse and worse and worse so i had to fix it there okay so um Mount Caledon wants to give us even more sculpture, but I, I've got no space for it, genuinely. And I don't know what I'm going to do with all that sculpture either. So I think I'm just going to let that pass into nothingness. Also, and I kind of feel bad about this, I'm going to remove two of these houses. And the reason for that... Yeah, I, I, oh, I should have clicked decline. I, I wonder if they'll dislike me when I decline it. I, I mean, no offence. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a theatre. Oh god, the theatre is so big. Alright, we'll put a gym there. And we'll put a podium there. Is that enough culture for you guys? Actually, I'll tell you what. Well, let's put the... Let's clear all of this, like this, right? 
Let's put the theater. Ooh, 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 ooh. Sorry, Caledon. Yeah, that's fine. Put the theater all the way up there. And then the gym down there. So these guys will roam up from the gym. The theater and the podium, they'll roam up. So that should be pretty good. So yeah, we haven't quite nailed a perfect setup here. We just lost two houses of space and it's not too good. Really, though, is it? I'm very interested in the fact that these guys aren't evolving. It's because they need a fountain. I never gave these guys a fountain over here. It's amazing. Look, the upper classes don't even need water. You, you hear it, heard it here in this game first. Guys, there's a festival. Okay, so those guys will work in that water fountain. It will evolve these houses. So if we'd move this out, this path out one more, we'd have this little gap here. We could have put another house in. So these houses will evolve. They'll, they'll deal with our unemployment just a little bit. Meanwhile, these guys are bringing culture. So that's good. See supplies. So you see these guys have access to the first three, but not the next three Olympian games. More culture though. It's because the podium isn't working yet. And the podium, I think it's just got, we just got to wait for people to get here basically. Because they'll be moving along. So we kind of got like an upper class district over here now. Now the other thing I wanted to do while I was editing the previous part as well is if I go administration. I wanted to build a bridge. Oh my god, I really, I can hear fire again. Can't you guys hear fire? I'm sure I hear fire somewhere. Why aren't you guys evolving as well? Appeal? Appeal I can do. Okay, let's give you guys... So there's three types of columns. Doric, Ionic, and Corinthian. I don't really know what the difference in real life is between Doric, Corinthian, and so on. Um, I suppose, you know, Corinth is a place, so whatever. I guess that's as, much, as far as it goes. They're, it's a style popular in Corinth. Anyway, uh, for the as far as the game's concerned, I think they all have the same price. They're just different patterns. There's really not much more to it. They still need more appeal. They're not happy. So let's do something new here. Let's give them a fish pond. I really love the fish pond. One of my favorite things. Oh, I've got to tell you guys all about my new fish. Look at that. So good. Oh, love it. Hygiene is near perfect and rising. There you go. And these two buildings here. We've got little hedge maze as well. The hedge maze sounds way cooler than it looks. You know, I would expect it to be a bit more 3D, a bit taller or whatever. It looks so flat. But anyway, there you go. Some nice big townhouses there. It's all very spread out and weird, isn't it? This is a very weird looking city, I've got to say. It'll be very good when I can show you guys some of the other layouts you can do. Uh, sorry, Munkatherian, but whatever. I don't care that you think less of me. I didn't even have any wine. I don't even know if I can... Can I produce wine now? No, I can't produce it. So you're asking me to quick, hastily buy in. Oh, right, here we go. So these guys are all moving in now. 35 qualify. I might need to just get the, the armor going. So, I mean, why not? So over here... I mean, look, we have bronze. So, I th and I believe I saw it already. So if we go to military, you see there's the armory building. Yeah, where's this fire? Holy crap. That's really bad. I definitely don't want that to burn down. Ares is shouting oh, well, there we go. joy over his latest fortress, and his Spartai stand guard over your city. With Thebes well protected and in the trustworthy hands of your prideful deputy, Oedipus, it is time to set forth and expand the kingdom. The Oracle at Delphi recommends establishing a city at Sidonia in Crete, though she's hinted that fertile <laughs> fields and great forests are not the only things to be found there. Okay, this is this is really bad. Okay. <laughs> oh god, I don't know what's gonna happen now. Um <laughs> I did put the building down, so <laughs> hopefully that fire gets put out. Hopefully. Uh, I don't know what's gonna happen. So here's a cool thing, okay. Ares is happy, blah blah blah. 
Thebes is okay. It's well, it's on fire, but it's well protected, okay, by those soldiers that live in those nice houses that we were only just starting off with. Those houses are the same as the other ones. They evolve lots and lots and lots, and they look cool as hell when they get really high, highly evolved. But anyway, so I don't know what the Oracle at Delphi. Who is that? Where's Delphi? Who's the Oracle there? Whatever. But they're saying to uh, establish Sidonia in Crete. She's hinted the fertile fields and great forests are not the only things found there. So when I click proceed, we go to the world map. I click Sidonia, a rugged and forested land. Sidonia is located on Crete, the gateway to the rest of the world. So choose this location. So later they do, fa I'll, I'll, I'll leave it cryptic here, but they do fancy things with this. But for now, we just got this one option. The people of Crete are wary of you and an old beggar man reveals the reason. Once a woman was spotted far off our shores, approaching our island on the crest of a giant foamy wave. As the woman drew closer, it became clear that she wasn't riding on the sea, but on the back of a great white bull. The bull deposited the woman on our shores, and Talos, a bronze man forged by Hephaestus guards the woman night and day. The bronze man guards our island too, preventing invaders from doing us harm. It has been prophesied that a leader from Thebes will come to our island and take this woman from us. We fear that if this leader succeeds, Talos will no longer guard our island. And since you are from Thebes, you might just be the one that will change our world completely. You know, I was kind of hoping to come back to this game and sort of jive with these a bit more, but this just feels like a bunch of gobbledygook. Anyway, Zeus and Europa. Oh, no, that's just the the the, um, the overall adventure, in, isn't it? Here we go. This is the chapter, the Cretan princess. So our goal is to get some wood and some wine, two resources that our other city could not make. So we're establishing a colony. Oh yeah. What's happening here is we have a whole new map and we're gonna create a, a satellite town that will support our main one. Uh, which means we get to do a lot of new uh, fun, weird, uh, kooky things. So we'll see all the ways in which we can mess that up and be fun and strange. And uh, thanks very much for watching, guys. Look, it's still giving me the notification about fire. That's funny. Uh, thank you, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Um, this has been a lot of fun to shoot so far, and I will see you on the next one uh, very, very soon. Take care. Oh, we get the nice nostalgic music again. Okay, guys, so the episode is over. Here, I'll play that nice nostalgic music uh, for this little bit. So I'm going to tack on a section to the end of this video. And in fact, most episodes of this Let's Play from now on are going to have little bonus bits at the end. You guys are more than welcome to skip if you like. However, um, there's some really cool information about the game that you don't really actually see in the game uh, that I thought might be fun to share. Um, so first, starting off here. I showed you the intro video at the start of the last episode. I also, in that intro, if you guys remember, mentioned something about the manual. Uh, so I've got to show you guys this, and I'm going to splice it in here. We're not going to read the whole manual, don't worry, because it, it would be way, way, way too long. However, it is online if you guys are interested as this goes forward. Uh, so this is the Zeus manual. We're from an era of gaming where we had big boxes, massive manuals. You take ages installing. Uh, like, they even had three different installation types for this game. Like, there was a light install where you'd still need the disc, a medium, and then a, a large install where you'd never even need to put the disc in again. Um, and while you're installing, you know, you'd read through this stuff. And basically, they have... There is an in-game tutorial that's very good. Uh, but they also have a full-on tutorial here in the manual, uh, which is nuts. And the reason I want to show it to you guys is because it's written like a short story. It's written like a comedy, you know, like the intros and outros of the missions where we get that funny like dialogue with the really cool voice acting. It's kind of in that style and it's hilarious. There was a Reddit thread about this uh, a couple of months ago where someone said, oh my God, I never knew the manual was so funny. I've got to show this off to you guys. So check it out. Uh, Invocation, the adventure begins. I'll, I'll read you guys the intro and then just show you some other little tidbits. Tell us, sweet muse Calliope, of that noble and famous hero, Democrates, who traveled far and wide, leading a life filled with adventurous exploits. Okay, so immediately, you might be wondering who Democrates is. 
Democracy is kind of the stand-in for us, the player in the game. Obviously, you can name yourself whatever you want, like Potatofus is what I picked. I don't know whether Democrates was actually one of the preset names on the list, which would be quite interesting if it is. Democrates kind of is a thing in real life as well, right? There are some maxims, as far as I understand about ancient Greek, Greek history, there are some references that this guy was like the father of democracy and a big forefigure in it. However, a lot of people think he might not have even exist. Almost nothing is known, actually known about the guy. And there's another guy, Democritus, who is very well known. And there are kind of some theories that actually Democrates isn't real. Democrates just got confused in later years with Democritus, who, of who we know a lot about. So what they've done in the manual here is they've said, ah, oh, well, let's say Democrates is real and it's you, it's the player, which I think is kind of amazing. Leading a life filled with adventurous exploits. He fought countless battles throughout the world, raided cities and amassed great wealth as his legend spread throughout Greece. A band of followers trailed his every move. But one day, Democrates grew tired of moving about from place to place and, with his followers, founded a mighty city, the likes of which the world had never seen. This, fair muse, is the story that we beseech you to tell. How did this formidable fighting man manage to settle a city that became the greatest in all of Greece? Beloved muse, relate the story of his city's rise, of the new adventures he met along the way, of the other great heroes who helped him in his cause, and of the mighty Olympians who at times were invaluable helpmates and at others formidable obstacles. Guide my pen, beloved muse, so that it might remain faithful to the truth. How did Democrates lead his people through the early days, before he discovered Demeter's gifts? Which crafts did the glorious Athena and ingenious Hephaestus teach him? And how did he conquer the great Poseidon Sea and the brutal Greek landscape to trade with cities far and near? We know too that Democrates learned about the finer things. His city was filled with wondrous theatres, and all that the actors of his city were considered to be the best in all of Greece. Scholars from around the world were drawn to the city to study the sage philosophers who preached there, and the athletics! Legend tales of a city filled with scores of strong men. How did Democrates manage these feats? Relate to us, old muse, the legend of Democrates is cunning. With sweet smiles, he wooed the other cities to ally with him, and with the steel of his blade, convinced other cities to swear fealty. And, remembering the spirit of his adventure-seeking past, he broke ground on new cities in unexplored lands, and piece by piece his empire grew. I will tell you all this and more in due time, the muse replied, for the story of great Democrates is more fantastic than you can imagine. But every story must begin properly, and before Democrates embarked on his journey, the fir he first had to install Zeus on his computer. Okay. <laughs> Here it just gets completely off the wall. Installing Zeus, Hephaestus emerged from his forge, holding a shiny silver disc. This Zeus CD-ROM is what you will need to get started, Democrates, he announced. To install Zeus on your computer, insert the Zeus CD into your CD-ROM drive. Most say that Windows autoplay function then began automatically, and a screen popped up offering Democrates the options of installing, playing, uninstalling, and quitting Zeus. I'm now realizing this isn't all Hephaestus dialogue. Legend says that Democrates chose install to get started. A few claim that autoplay did not work on Democrates' computer, so he double-clicked the My Computer icon, and then double-clicked on the icon that represented his CD-ROM drive. In the list of files that appeared, he double-clicked on Setup DX EXE to get started. The install program automatically chooses a file path for Zeus, Hephaestus continued. Or you can choose your own path, blah, blah, blah. So you get the picture. And they do this, guys. Okay, I'm just going to scroll through this manual here. Here, check out on this page. They actually made concept art of Hephaestus with a CD-ROM. They do it for ages and ages and ages. Democrates took into consideration his system resources and chose the install size that best suited his needs. And then they go on to basically talk about every piece of UI every mechanic in the game it's like over a hundred pages and they do it all in the style of this big greek story which i i just think is fantastic and amazing and obviously we're very far from this kind of thing in gaming these days i will however show you this because i have read it and this was a really interesting tidbit here for me that i think might be hinting at a cut piece of content or something so in the husbandry section where they're teaching about you know what you can do with animals and and, and hunting and so on um, they talk a little bit about this guy, this character Pan. Pan picked up his pipes and scampered off. Democrates had hardly absorbed the information Pan had given him when Artemis, the chaste huntress, appeared, along with a curious man who kept changing shapes. It could only be one god, Proteus, god of the herds of the sea. So the way that this manual is structured is they'll tell you about like an industry or something, and then the god that helps with that industry and in what way. And weirdly enough, in the husbandry section, they've got Proteus in the manual. Proteus is not a god. 
god in this game. And that trivia might not be too interesting to you guys right now at episode 3, but trust me, later on, when we're very familiar with the gods and what they do, I, I find that absolutely fascinating. Um, I don't know whether Proteus ever was planned or it's just a little bit of extra flavour in here. Um, but kind of a fun thing. So, yeah, there you go, guys. That's the end section for this video. I will return to the manu manual one more time as well in a later video because they have a really good... It's not like a tongue-in-cheek story thing. They have developer interviews. You know, the kind of thing you'd expect devs to put on blog posts nowadays? They have at the end of the manual. They talk about how, like, one of the guys was a playtester for a year and then became the lead designer on this thing. All sorts of fun things. They talk about Xena, the warrior princess. So we'll get to that in another part. And um, to tell you the truth, guys, most of these end sections are going to be a kind of on a very special feature about the dialogue in the game but I guess I'll hold that off for the next one. So thanks very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. That's a bit on the Zeus manual. A bit of more completedness for the series. I'll see you next time.